Hello, friends, and welcome to week six, lecture four. Uh, week six, lecture three was introduction to interest groups, which you probably have some recollection of studying in political science 1101, uh, American government. But now we're going to look at it very briefly and introduce the role and the importance of interest groups in comparative politics in week six, lecture four. Please keep in mind there's much more in-depth information in the um, lecture notes and in the textbook on interest groups, and you are responsible for uh, those items as well. Okay, let's talk about interest groups. Interest groups are not officially part of the government. They're outside the government. They're not an institution of government like a legislature or an executive or a uh, Congress or Parliament, the legislative bodies. Uh, they're not part of that, but they have a tremendous influence in shaping the policy that is formulated, sh often uh, play a dominant role in the uh, contributions to political campaigns, and ultimately they have a tremendous impact on the lives of citizens in uh, almost all democratic countries and even in some uh, authoritarian and totalitarian uh, countries. What is an interest group then? It's an organization that speaks up for the interests, uh, represents a particular group of citizens, and they try to influence the government. Uh, that's part of it. Uh, part of the, the main definition, and one way to unpack that is how does it actually work? Well, there's really two roles of interest groups, two fundamental roles, regardless of the type of political system. Number one is they try to influence the policy of the government. By that we mean they try to control uh, the information flow. Uh, they try to provide as much information as possible on a topic in every possible way and try to influence uh, decision makers, uh, often in the legislature and the executive, that their ideas are best. Secondly, interest groups fund political campaigns. And typically countries have legal mechanisms for how this takes place, but they fund political campaigns by giving money to candidates, and they also fund the promotion of political ideas. Uh, in terms of how this is done, uh, keep in mind there are different types of interest groups. There are as many types of interest groups as there are human interests in any country, but they certainly want to represent particular interests and share or articulate the role of those interests and the needs of those interests. So some interest groups have very broad, uh, a very, very broad scope. Some have a very narrow scope. We call those the narrow range interest group. Usually it's a very clear articulated interest. And uh, there are also uh, interest groups that represent uh, large groups of the public. Uh, as, as well. Uh, interest groups are an intermediate institution, very much like the media and other aspects of society. Well, that leads us to our next big issue is what type of interest groups do we find in world politics in various countries? Uh, there are many types. There are what we call associational interest groups. They, they join for a particular reason. For example, uh, they have an economic interest in common. Uh, the um, pistachio growers in uh, India, for example, they form a form. They form an interest group. The pistachio growers of Kerala, for example, and their goal is to promote their interests, to make sure that government understands what they're doing, make sure that the government understands their needs, and uh, that the price supports that have been in place for pistachios for the last 50 years continue. Uh, they might be uh, conglomerates of interest groups. They can be professional associations. One of the fastest growing types of uh, associations in a comparative context is government workers who form together to promote their interests and their welfare and, 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 uh, and they represent their interests in various countries to the national government. Another type is ethnic uh, groups. Uh, that promote the, their particular interests. In the United States, for example, we talk about the NAACP, the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People, representing the ideas and needs 
and policy preferences of African Americans. Sometimes uh, people of a particular age, age focus group, um, most famous is the AARP, which I am now eligible uh, to join. My wife was already a member, so uh, I get to pick on. I was able to pick on her for a few years that she was a lot older and able to join. Uh, now I gotta, I gotta uh, tough it out and, and realize that I'm in the same group now. Religious groups, sometimes re uh, groups funded by a particular or guided by a particular religious uh, beliefs, uh, believe that they need the interest and they need uh, the support of each other, and they form an interest group. Also, there's what we call a uh, a, uh, in, a a single interest type group. They have one focus, uh, one one uh, one thing that, that combines their interests, and they advocate for that interest. Uh, we talk about another number of other kinds of groups in the lecture notes that I would really uh, encourage you to study uh, very carefully. Uh, we also talk about different concepts of how interest groups come together. Uh, the fancy political term is interest group formulation. We talk about mainly two models in the course of uh, uh, comparative politics. One is what we call a pluralistic model. Uh, as a concept that within democracy, um, one group um, may combine and consist of many parts. And that, uh, but at the same time, people are allowed to join their own uh, groups and create their own groups. And you can certainly do that in most democratic countries. Um, and we also talk about corporatism, uh, where um, leaders, uh, again, of very large groups, often come together and actually negotiate and with the government, and if they're not happy with the way these things work out, they, they may very well try to take over the government. So that's a very, very important consideration. Uh, the lecture notes and the textbooks also, textbook also talks about different kinds of groups, how they function, how they make decisions, uh, ba basic models. So I would urge you to study the rational choice theory, the social movement theory, uh, and the others that are mentioned in both those sources. We also talk about the source of interest group power, uh, which I would urge you to spend some time in your reading and study uh, of the lecture notes and of the textbook uh, to see how that works because you really can't understand modern uh, comparative politics without understanding the role of interest groups. And given the diversity of a, of a world system of politics with 200 countries, uh, we have a, such a fluidity and such a diversity of interest groups that uh, have tremendous influence in their particular countries, sometimes even in other countries, that we cannot ignore the study of interest groups in comparative politics.